Welcome to the course of principles of vibration control. We have reached the last lecture now in terms of active vibration control and today with the help of all our earlier knowledges of state space system, we will try to develop controller of for the state space model and which will be in the form of full state feedback control. So, we will talk about now the full state feedback control. We will start with the introduction to full state feedback control corresponding block, block diagram and then we will talk about the controller design with system in control canonical form. So, the first point when we will talk about a full state feedback control is that uh, if you compare it with the transfer function based technique which we have earlier worked on, then the compensators for the transfer function based techniques are designed to predominantly control the response of second order systems in frequency domain. So, by adjusting the presence of gain, poles and zeros of the compensator, the adverse effect of the system is compensated. But if there are higher order poles, that means uh, as you can see that for a second order system, if I just draw it very quickly that uh, for a classical control, uh, you know that is the S plane and this is the real of S and this is the imaginary of S and the poles if you remember there are only two poles right and that was the second order system. Now, if you have a multi body system multiple degrees of freedom you may have more poles maybe the poles will be here maybe it will be here all these higher order poles or maybe they will be far away from the imaginary uh, on the imaginary axis you know much far away. So, if you have this type of higher order poles, you will either neglect it or you will compensate it separately using notch filters. However, on the full state feedback control, we actually regulate the behavior of all the poles of the system. We really do not neglect anybody. So, that is the good part of it. So, although such design is based on an idealistic assumption that you can sense all the states of the system. In reality of course, you cannot sense all the states then some states are estimated and then those estimated states you have to design an observer separately to make sure that that estimation is good enough. So, that we can this virtual is virtually estimated states can be passed by as just like the regular states and our full state feedback control model remains intact. So, that is what you know is a kind of a discussion between the two. Now, this the top part is this representation of x dot equals to a x plus v u. If you just give a little bit of time you will be able to see that. Suppose, this is v u here and you are adding this here and then this is you consider it to be x dot you are getting. So, 1 over s integrator will make it x and then here it is this x is coming out here with the pre multiplication with a it becomes a x. So, this is plus and this is plus which means we are going to get x dot equals to a x plus p u. So, that is the you know transfer function in the open loop form and also y equals to c x we can see that this is x this is c you are getting y equals to c x. So, this is the block diagram graphical representation of the system. Now, in this system if we try to put the gains etcetera how does that come into the picture. So, as you can see here that this part we have already discussed this is actually x dot equals to this is actually our x dot equals to a x plus p u. But the question is what will be this control f o t u? Well, if you are sensing this states x, let us say this is where you now have your controller gain. So, your controller gain is in the feedback loop and you are taking it here. This is your reference signal and this is minus this is plus. So, that means your u suppose for a very simple case r equals to 0, 
then no reference signal I have to simply bring down the vibration then my u will be simply minus k x. So, that means what is my system? It is x dot equals to a x plus b u. This is what is my active control system. Let me substitute the value of u there. So, it will become a minus b k x. This would become my new system. This a minus b k is clearly telling me at least something that earlier system when you did not have this feedback the characteristic poles or the eigenvalues or determinant of s i minus a. But now you have the new system whose determinant is determinant of s i minus a minus b k. So, this a got changed. So, that means my eigenvalues will get changed by suitably choosing this gain k I can actually place all the eigenvalues to my required position that is what we will be learning today. So, uh, whatever we have discussed let us bring it in the context of first control canonical form. So, the determinant of S i minus a is S n plus a n minus 1 S n minus 1 a 1 s plus a 0 equals to 0, where it is in a control canonical form. So, I can very easily construct it from this characteristic equation that only this last row will have all these coefficients then these are the zeros and then the super diagonals are unity rest are all zero that is the control canonical form if you remember and the terms below are also all zero except the last row where we have all the coefficients. B also has this very special form 0 0 0 to unity and C is of course, having all the you know uh, fully populated with the coefficients in it but we will be bothered mostly with A and B when we will be designing the controller in this system. C we will take care of when we have to do the observer design. Now, let us define the control law and as we have shown you in the earlier block diagram, let us say you have a negative state feedback control which is u equals to minus k x. So, let us say my structure of k is k 1 to k n. This all these instead of a single gain now you have a gain vector. Okay. So, these are all the gains. So, together they form a gain vector and by designing the controller means I have to get what are going to be these gain vectors. So, my new state space equation is x dot equals to a minus b k x and y remains as it is as c x. So, it is only the first state equation which gets affected by the introduction of the control law. Now, what is the characteristic equation of S i minus A minus B k? Well, the good part is that A is in a control canonical form and B also in a canonical form. So, if you just work it out you will see simply there are additions in the coefficients. So, your earlier open loop system was having coefficients like A n minus 1, A m minus 2 to A 0 and the controller is simply this control vector is getting added with these coefficients. Okay. So, that is what is happening to the system. Now, let us say our client has given us what are the desired roots of the closed loop system. That means, for any n dimensional system let us say you know for this type of a system they are telling me that in the s plane where these uh, lambdas should be there. The desired ones are let us say given to us that this is the way you arrange it. So, I know beforehand what are my desired roots. Now, since I know the roots I can find out the characteristic equation of the system. If you consider it for this kind of a four pole system then you can write it as s minus lambda 1 into s minus lambda 2 into s minus lambda 3 into s minus lambda 4 equals to 0. If it is of n then you can write it like that and in the long hand once you do it you are going to get the characteristic equation. This characteristic equation if you see that its coefficients are with d, d n minus 1 to d 0. The d is telling us that this is the desired coefficient. So, in one hand I have the desired coefficient and in the other hand I have the planned coefficient and some unknown gains. Now, it is very simple 
because for each and every polynomial uh, you know order like s to the power n minus 1, I have to get it as d n minus 1. So, what will be my k n? Well, the k n will be such that the d n minus 1 will become a n minus 1 plus k n. In other words, k n will be d n minus 1 minus a n minus 1. So, that means for k i will be d i minus 1 minus a i minus 1 and this principle will go from i equals to 1 to n. So, in some sense it is actually a distance between the uh, you know characteristic polynomials that comes from the desired eigenvalues and the corresponding uh, coefficients which comes from the open loop plan system. That distance if it is far that means I need more gain, if it is very close that means I need less gain to have a full state feedback control. So, that is what is my full state feedback control in the uh, you know canonical form. Now, how would it look like in the non canonical form? Well, if it is in non canonical form, I have to tra transfer it into canonical form. There are in fact, certain algorithms there Ackermann's and Bhaskura formulations, I will come to it later. First of all, let us see how we can do in a straightforward manner. Okay. So, if it is in a non canonical form, let us say that this transformation matrix exists. So, that means this x dot equals to x plus b u will now become z dot t inverse a to z plus t inverse b u which is a control canonical z plus b c u. So, that is the first part we have to convert the system into the canonical form. Now, in this case before you do anything you please first check what is the controllability matrix and whether the system is controllable at all or not. That you can very easily do if you remember, if you check the rank of that controllability matrix and say see whether it is equal to the uh, state you know of number of states of A. Okay. If it satisfies then you proceed, otherwise the controller design is not possible. How do we find it? Uh, now, the next is that in order to do all these things. so. I need to know what is x equals to t z, what is the transformation matrix. How do I find out this transformation matrix to begin with? Well, that is simple. First of all, you can find out the roots of the characteristic equation that is s i minus a inverse. So, the moment you get this equated to 0, you get the characteristic equation. The moment you get the characteristic equation, you can develop your uh, control canonical form because uh, once I know this characteristic equation, then I know all these coefficients a n to a 0 and also I know b has to be in this form. So, by you know combining these two knowledge, I can very easily find out that what is my controllability matrix because uh, you know I already know and uh, this I know and also I know what is the transformation matrix. Now, since I know the transformation matrix and this equals to t of c c hat let us say for the canonical form. So, then the t is the transformation matrix the easiest way to find out is that it will be c hat c c hat minus. So, I should be able to find out this. Now, let us actually imagine that the system is in canonical form. So, I can very easily now get the gain k c and once I get the gain k c I can find out the gain in the non canonical form which is k c times t inverse. So, I can go back from non canonical form uh, and this from canonical form to non canonical form and finally, give what will be the gain of my system. Let us try to actually discuss this uh, with the respect uh, of some kind of a formulation. Say for uh, one easy uh, way to do it is by using Ackermann's algorithm where k is considered to be r c hat inverse psi a, where r is of 0 to 1 and c hat is actually the controllability matrix and psi a is having all the coefficients of the desired characteristic polynomial which you know. So, you can find out the gain k very easily. This is actually based on a principle that a matrix always satisfies its own characteristic equation which is also known as Cali Cali Hamilton's theorem. 
So, that is uh, you know if you want to do it directly and uh, there is also another formulation that is used at times which is known as Bascura algorithm. Here you have the open loop plans A0 to An and you have the desired characteristics one. You can get the gain very easily k provided you know c hat, you know w, you know psi and psi hat where psi has the desired one and psi hat is the existing one. So, and what is the w? w is a 12 Euclid's matrix which has all the diagonals as unity and then the a0 to a n minus 1 this is a special formation and that is how if you can develop w you can get the gain k of the system. So, you can use either of these formulations, these three formulations to design the gain k. The question is now where to place these closed loop poles, because uh, you can actually place it anywhere that is the freedom that you are getting in full state feedback control. Now, given a freedom of course, you should design the system such that it is predominantly second order in nature. So, that means higher order poles should be placed at least 5 times away from the real part of the second order poles. So, that way if you do then you can keep a system predominantly second order which may be good for you. However, the if you want to do it from the energy point of view you should not place the closed loop poles quite far away from the open loop poles because then the gain requirement would increase proportionately. So, one way you can play is with the choice of the B matrix which plays an important role as the lesser controllable systems generally require higher gains. So, if my B matrix choice is proper then the gain will be uh, requirement will be smaller and hence I will be easily able to place the closed loop poles to the desired locations. One way to do it is actually to use something which is known as Butterworth pole configuration and this actually tells us the desired locations can be find out if you can solve this characteristic equation where k is the number of poles that you would need and uh, to place a single pole on the negative real axis at a distance omega from the origin uh, k equals to 1 and similarly for k equals to 2 the radial distance remains unchanged however the poles will be complex and at an angle of 45 degree from the imaginary axis. So, basically what it does is that it actually tells you that if k equals to 1 then you put it on this axis itself. If k equals to 2 then you put it in that same circle you take a circular arc and you take the two desired poles in this way that is what the Butterworth pole con configuration do. If it is 3 then actually you divide these angles into 3 parts and you divide each one of them into 3 of it. So, like that you increase. So, that is how the Butterworth pole configuration tells us about the pole placement of the system. So, this is where we are going to put an end. Thank you.